When was the first time that you registered yourself as a sexual person? Probably like mid-twenties. I've never considered myself a sexual being. I remember this time in, I want to say, third grade. And then like from then on, I was like obsessed with sex. Like I was trying to find it everywhere. What up lovers and friends? This video is sponsored by Beducated, the Netflix of sexual wellness. It's an online course platform that helps you to level up your love life and upgrade your love making skills. Something that all of us, regardless of experience level can benefit from. When did you first start masturbating? Um, 2001. To be exact. <laughs> Is that real? That's very accurate. I can remember the moment actually. Uh, Dr. Dre had an album, I forget the name of it, but I see the cover. And um, there was a track, it was just an interlude, and this girl was having an orgasm and they were having sex, and I would masturbate to that sound. 2001, how old were you then? 14. 14. Yeah. Can we give a little shout out to my math? I just got an yeah, A in statistics. Yeah, for you. That was quick. Thanks. All right, take it. This is this is so embarrassing to talk about. This is so whack. But again, I was at a sleepover, and I remember my friend speaking about masturbation. Like he was like, "Do you guys masturbate?" And I didn't know what it was. I was like, "What is that? What is that?" Is and he's like, "It's when you rub your dick until it just can't rub it no more." And I was like, "Huh." So later that night, I went into the restroom and I tried. Did cool. you report back to your friend? I was like, "It hurt." And he's like, that means you did it right. Really? <laughs> yeah, and I was like, okay. <laughs> and maybe. 14, 14, maybe? I actually called my friend and told him, I was like, bro, I did it. I was very excited, because he used to talk about masturbating all the time. And I didn't understand it. I was like, what are you talking about? And then I pulled it off. Well, not literally, but. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope not. Figuratively, I pulled it off. And I was very, I was like very, I remember being excited. Um, Surprised because I never I was like brand new feeling. I've never experienced anything like that. I'm trying to see what that feels like. So, are you not loving this conversation? I promise we're going right back into it. But first, a message from the sponsor of this video, Beducated. We are here to tell you about Beducated. It is the Netflix of sexual wellness. It's an online course platform that gives people the literal tools to level up their lovemaking step by step. Yeah. And we have been taking these courses together. Mm -hmm. And I just got to say... The I've, sex got kinkier. The sex got kinkier. <laughs> it got friskier. It got wetter. It got better. Which I think is important for people to know that even as people who study sex, we are still learning techniques. Yeah. Um, there were techniques that I learned through Beducated that I literally had never even thought of before. Yeah. So, whether you are single or partner, they have courses for you. We specifically went to the couple section and they have over 53 courses for couples alone. Everything from kinky, kinky sex, sex, tantric massage, oral sex, all of it. How to squirt, all of how it. to give better hand jobs. How to get better hand jobs. <laughs> <laughs> we love Beducated and we love this partnership. And why we love it so much is they are offering an incredible deal that everyone can benefit from. And we're all about inclusivity. So no matter what day you are watching this on, if you click that link, you will get one day, 24 hours free access to all of Beducated's content and courses. So take advantage of it. You can learn something new. And try something new. Better sex, better life. Oh, but wait, babe, there's more. You're also gonna get 70% off the cost of a yearly pass for Beducated, which means you're only gonna be paying $7.99 per month for an incredible catalog of how to level up your lovemaking skills. But wait, you didn't tell them the best part. I just didn't. I told them about the same person. No, no, it's not the best part because this deal that we're offering right now is locked in forever. That means forever, not just this year. Every year that you use Beducated, you are going to get that discount forever. Hit the link in my description and get 24 hour full access to Beducated plus access to the 70% off forever discount. Yep. Click that link. Click that link. Click that link. Lick that link. Lick that link. As you know by now, in this video, I interview three men about their sex lives. What you might not know is these three men are the hosts of Enjoy the Podcast. And if you want to see more of them, you can go over to Jared's YouTube channel or just keep watching this video. I remember um, I had a roommate in New York. And so at the time I would have been um, 21, 22. And he asked me just in conversation, just like, do you masturbate? And I was like, no, no, totally lying. Yeah. And 
I remember thinking like, why, why can't I be honest about this? Like everyone does it, but I, I was just, it was like a shame feeling. It's that taboo <laughs> for me. And then it just got better as I like did it more and I was actually like not shooting blanks and stuff like that. Then it became an issue when I was just jerking it every free moment that I had. Parents were like going, oh, yes, <laughs> go, it's go time. So yeah, that was probably about like 17. Oh God, man, I was a horny little thing at that age. I was humping everything. Sleeping bags, pillows, nothing was safe. I have never really had a crazy sex drive. It's always been something that I like wanted but didn't need. Uh, but on the contrary, maybe because the the masturbation was there, so I was always like, I can just do what I need to do. I don't need someone. Um, and I'm great at it. And I'm really good at it. I know what we like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so um, more so and quicker than you would. But. Um, but yeah, so I never really had like a high sex drive. I remember um, girls I would date would be like, is it me, you know? And I'm like, no, no, I'm just like I'm tired. You know, I really feel like, you know. Um, but yeah, so it never like, there wasn't like a, a four or five year span or whatever time frame span of like, I was out here like a, you know, dog humping anything that breathed, you know, it wasn't like that. From like 13 to probably 20, <laughs> it's this nonstop drive to come and you're going to do it at any time, any place, you know, you're gonna get it, get off. You know, especially if you become like alone, if everyone leaves the house, it's almost a guarantee. It's almost a guarantee. So everybody out there who has sons that is from the ages of 13 to 18, know that when you leave the house and he's alone, he's in there with the jerkins. I think it's such a fascinating thing and something I always want to lean into whenever I talk to teens about sex. Mm. Because I think they have to understand yeah. what that insatiable, especially people with vulvas, like they may not relate to that insatiable desire to mm. ejaculate. What right. is it like inside of the penis during these periods? It's kind of like being hungry where it's like the only thing that you can think about is just, I need to eat something. And there's just like even like the physical feeling to like eat. You have the same like physical feeling to just like ejaculate, you know, get the, the grind motion, whatever it may be. You just as a young man, you're just like, I gotta, I gotta come. I think it really falls on like being educated on what's going on in your body. You know what I mean? I, I don't think uh, most young boys are taught that this is what's happening. Um, yes, you're taught that puberty is gonna happen and you're taught like you're gonna grow facial hair and all these things, but I don't think it's really talked to them like, hey, just so you know, you're gonna be wanting to have sex extremely, extremely, extremely strong. It's gonna pull you to do some crazy things. Always keep it in check, you know? It's kind of like the thing that like, you, you have a conversation with someone who's gonna do drugs. Like, hey, don't jump off this building. You're on drugs. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's just like kind of like, hey, don't do this. You're just going through puberty. You know. Yeah. You know, a thing that we were doing as kids when we go to sleepovers is like, you know, it was just in the same time when computers started and the internet started going crazy. And so we would go over to like a friend's house and watch porn or people would look it up. And I remember when I first saw porn, it was like disgusting. Like I was like, what is this? This is too much. You know, go back to like the movies when they're just dry humping. Like yeah. that's, that used to get me hard. Uh, but, but he would show me porn and it was so explicit and so aggressive that I was like, this is crazy. And it felt bad to watch. Uh, but then as I got older, I, like I started to need to see that to get excited. What was your sex education then growing up? Figure it out on your own. It was figured out on your own. I didn't have a dad growing up. I had a stepdad who, um, he exited my life, our life, my mom and I, when I was um, 15, 16. So I think like we would have had that talk had he had stayed a little bit longer. Um, I think he thought he had more time, but I lost my virginity actually on my 15th birthday. So um, yeah, but it was very figure out. Didn't have like a, an older male figure that I felt comfortable with in talking about sex, and I damn sure wasn't comfortable with my mom or my sister who helped raise me. I was taught how to have a baby and not have a baby. And you know, like even growing up in my household, like it was like, don't don't even have sex. Condoms don't work. How do you think you got here? Um, yeah, that was like the thought. So I didn't even trust condoms to be safe. Like I thought that like 
so I'm just gonna swim through it. There's Cause you did condom plus pull out method. Yeah, well, all my entire time of having sex. Yeah, no, I, I lost my virginity at 18 and I knew I wanted to do it again, but I just didn't really know like how to make it happen. I mean, I like I knew what, you know, I'd seen on TV and all that, but I didn't, I didn't feel confident for one. And then I just didn't feel, I guess I just didn't feel informed as to like, how to go about getting what I want. Like my education all came from like seeing my homeboy and stuff, which was the worst education how to court a woman. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, I ended up just kind of playing the sidelines until I got probably to my mid twenties. But I also didn't feel very attractive until then either. So kind of the older I got, the more I came into myself, the more I became sexually aware and more sexually active. I was a relationship guy um, back then, so it was like, you know, not that, it wasn't quantity for sure as far as sexual partners, but um, I just remember thinking like, it happens this way, and when you're done, you're done, and then you move on. Like again, there was no experimenting, there was no, I didn't have a, a feeling of like a safe space to explore more. Um, craved it because when watching porn, I'd be like, ooh, I wanna try that, but I don't know if they're, you know, and I would talk myself out of it. I wouldn't even bring it up to them in conversation because um, I didn't want them to think like, I like them over you, right? Or like, you can't do this, but I'm still gonna pleasure myself off of that and it's unfair to you. So all these, again, just confusing for lack of a better word. Um, I was just aimlessly going with whatever flow. Missing the hole? I would never miss. Uh, <laughs> I mean, a side note, perfect segue. Um, I then became a father, uh, actually at the end of that five year term. Oh yeah, I became 20. a father at 20. Arguably, you know, might not be a father at 20, or would have been a father at 20, if I had some type of influence in my life or just better education, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm grateful for my daughter, of course, but um, I've, I've often wondered like, if I grew up with a dad, or just my, even my stepdad, if he didn't leave, right, or just a better education system um, where I felt comfortable to express myself and be honest, I don't know if I'd be a father at 20. Mm -hmm. I doubt I would be a father at 20. So does that mean you never had conversations around sexual health? Nobody ever bought you a box of condoms? No, no? definitely not. Do they do? No, definitely not. <laughs> Am I making an or incorrect assumption to say that when you started sexually engaging with people, yeah. that was all you cared about? Oh, for sure. Yeah, because for one, I I felt like I was making up for lost time in one way. I was like, oh, I've been wasting all these years not doing this. Let me hurry up and see what how many I can I can do. So, yeah, no, I didn't care at all. It was just about you know, on to the next one, not just on the bedpost. Early twenties was cool. Like I I had a partner. We were having sex. Um, I don't know how focused I was on her pleasure per se. I liked when she had pleasure, but I wasn't trying to learn new tricks. I wasn't trying to, you know, learn off of her. And I think in that relationship, it was because I felt that security of being in the relationship that I was like, if she had a problem, she would tell me, mm -hmm. um, which is not always the case. You know, sometimes it's embarrassing to tell your partner, hey, you're doing this pretty shit. Yeah. Figure it out, <laughs> you know? So I guess it's like, I was having sex and I felt like I knew what I was doing, but when I look back at it, I don't think I did. If you were to think back on mm -hmm. the partners that you've had, and you know, in your 20s especially, do you think that they had great sex with you? Probably not. Um, yeah, I mean, again, it was like consistently, mm, I don't know. Is any of y'all out there that had sex with me before the age of 33? I'm sorry. I apologize. I know the sex wasn't good. Maybe you enjoyed it? Probably not. Me understand, like I thought I was prioritizing their pleasure at that time, but in reality, I didn't even know what that looked like. There's so many more, I guess this is my point, is that what I understand about the female anatomy right now is light years away of what I did, right? And so I didn't, if I cared about their pleasure, I would have been looking this stuff up on YouTube but I'm leaning on them to teach me what they like, right? And so, um, and a lot of times in those younger relationships, I don't think that she or they were ever comfortable telling me exactly what they liked. I think that they would just like react if I did something that they liked. And then I would just keep doing that thing. But um, I feel like in this relationship, 
it's more or less like I'm always constantly learning new new things. I mean, how many times do we have sex and you're like, did you try something new? Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And it's because of that, like that to me is seeking, you know, female pleasure or putting their, prioritizing their pleasure because it's like, there's so many different ways to pleasure a woman. And, and I didn't understand that. I thought there was like only a couple ways and that was it. Can you compare and contrast sex in your mid twenties to now in your mid thirties? Oh, it's way better now. Because it's actually, because I actually want, my goal, one of my goals, is for her to orgasm before I do, because I already know once I orgasm, I'm useless for like 15 minutes. So let's get you taken care of. I really, and not just because I want to get you out of the way, but I actually enjoy a woman and, you know, having pleasure when she's having sex with me, as you should, because that's the whole point. It's the two of you, it's not just the one of you. And I think that realization just made it way more enjoyable for me because it's kind of like giving a Christmas gift. When you give somebody a nice gift and they react, they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. It is nice. So it's kind of like, you know, I'm giving you a great gift. And at the same time, I know I'm going to get a great gift as well. So everybody's happy. It's a good Christmas. So now how would you describe sex in your 20s? Um, again, still... Um, with desires without clarity in how to explore these desires. Very vague. Mm -hmm. So you can unpack that if you'd like, but yeah. Does that mean you were having boring sex? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Layman's terms, dumbed down version. Yeah, very basic, back to that word, basic sex. And then when I got out of that relationship is when I think I started focusing on female pleasure more. I felt like I was, um, really just focused on learning at that time and wanting to be good and wanted my reputation to be good. So I didn't hesitate to be like, what can I do better or how do I learn from this? And then I think right after that, we met. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. I'm your early you, 20s. You were in that, that, that time where I was trying to learn. Because I met you at 24? Four. Yeah. Which is fascinating because I tell you this all the time. I always got the question of how did you find somebody who wasn't intimidated or aren't people very intimidated? And I immediately knew with you that that was not the case. And then later on you divulged to me that you were, your interest was piqued by what I did for a living. It wasn't a turnoff for you. No, not at all, You're not, not at all. And I think I was going through a very promiscuous time at the time, so I think the fact that you were a sexual educator, it was like, it, this is gonna sound bad, but I think I came into it being like, Oh, I'm about to learn some shit so that when I have sex with other people, I'm gonna put it down. Yeah. You know, that was like kind of my mindset. Um, I am capable of having like emotion, like emotionally detached sex, right? Like I, I can just have sex and it not be anything but sex. But I also do enjoy like when I have a connection with somebody, um, it doesn't even necessarily have to be somebody I'm dating. It just could be somebody that I vibe really well with. And so an actual true friends with benefits type of situation. Can we model a dialogue that you would have? So, I think you're very attractive. I mean, we obviously have a Thank crazy you. vibe together, right? Yeah. Um, but I am seeing somebody right now. However, I don't know if- you, You're seeing somebody? I am seeing somebody. Romantically? No, sexually. You have sex with other people? I do. Okay. That said, I would be interested in seeing if, you know, you'd like to go out, have a drink or something, and see if you'd like to have sex with me as well. And if that's something that you're interested in, we can figure out, you know, how you feel about the other partners and all that. But otherwise, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, are you looking to get into a relationship at this time? Because I'm open to that. It's not something I'm necessarily looking for. Um, I'm, I'm probably not. Should I try to be as awesome as I can to prove you wrong? That to would not be a good idea. Okay. I would not want you, I, I would say if we end up in a relationship, let it just happen organically, but don't go out of your way trying to prove anything to me because I don't want you to set yourself up to be disappointed by me not reciprocating the energy that you're putting out. Thanks. Relationship with sexual health. Getting tested and... Oh yeah, um, what about it? How often or... Yeah, like what was your relationship with Oh it? yeah, yeah. Um, again, just that no, educational piece to it. Um, I was pretty good at, at protecting myself um, with a condom, but even oral, you know, I, I wouldn't. So um, I had a, a girl that I was dating, I think it was the girl before my daughter's mom, 
And she was the first one to ever asked me, like, have you ever been tested before? And I was like, no. Because I was thinking, you, it's like, I never went to the dentist until I had a cavity. That was just me. So I wouldn't get a STD check or any mm -hmm. type of sexual I've check. I've never heard that analogy before. It's a really good analogy. Unless I had something wrong with mm -hmm. me. But they were like, no, no, to prevent, you want to prevent, not chase. And then the asymptomatic. Right. Yes. So I was like, oh, okay, well, where do I go? I didn't know what to do. You know, I'm like... 18 I think at the time so um, and then from then on uh, again relationship guy but when I would step out of my relationship um, selfishly I wasn't careful often you know so um, definitely got tested enough I guess I'll, I'll use that word yeah because you um, have multiple partners and enjoy multiple partners yep. tell me about your relationship with sexual health um, I use condoms 99% of the time. There are times when I don't. Um, but in those instances, it's usually with somebody who... Oh, that was a mosquito. I hope so. It's usually with somebody who um, I've had that discussion with and that we have both been made aware of each other's like testing status and that type of thing. Um, there have been times where I have slipped up in the past and I did not wear a condom. And by the grace of God, I have been fortunate enough not to have contracted anything or depending on how you look at it had a kid because mm. I'm not ready for one yet um, well I was going to ask you something first okay can you role play with me how to make the sexual health conversation sexy okay yeah for sure yes. all right hi Los hey Shan how you doing I'm really horny <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am too what do you know what do you like in the bedroom mm, I like to get head I like to give a little bit of head. Ooh. A little, a little, a little booty, maybe. Me too. I like, I like skin to skin contact. Yes. Yeah. That's a huge priority of mine. Yeah. I want to just feel free in the moment. To me, the best sex happens when it's off script. Mm -hmm. And to do that, I really make sure that I get tested before so that I can feel completely in the moment. Because you know, sometimes you don't actually know someone's status and you can't actually really like get in there how you want to get in there. So I know what my status is and I get tested regularly. Do you? I haven't had one recently, but let's let's go get a let's test. Let's go get a test. <laughs> and that's how you do it, kids. The more oh, you know. I was like super extremely focused on sexual health. And I think that only had to do with my fear with sex. And so I had this fear that like God was gonna strike me with the baby or strike me with the with an illness because I was going against his back. So I was getting tested often. Um, I you know always strapped up with every um, sexual experience that I had, and it was like a, a huge focus on me. I don't think it was a huge focus on me to protect myself per se, but it was a huge focus on me being like, you're not gonna catch me slipping, God. Like, you know what I mean? But I guess in, in turn, it was a good thing. Which is interesting because you're one of the first people I've met before who's never had a genuine pregnancy scare. No. Best orgasm ever, if you're willing to share the conditions. Mm. But I also recognize that you've shared more than you probably have ever shared before. So I will leave <laughs> that up to you. Um. I don't think I can pinpoint one specific moment. Um, but I will say my favorite time to orgasm is um, at the same time as my partner, but where there's just that level of like, I feel like I'm tethered. Like remember the movie Avatar? Yes. When they like tether their tails? Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Like when that orgasm comes at the same time we're tethered, I'm just like, ah. Oh. So, yeah. Like Relationship that. guy. Like that? <laughs> <laughs> that was a great answer. <laughs> that was a great answer. Best orgasm? It was slightly fueled by some mushrooms. I think how to achieve my best orgasm is I have to be edged. And it has to be slow. Um, it can't be like pound, 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 come. You know what I mean? It has to be like a slow buildup that's very, very slow. And then almost like right before I, I come, I have to stop. Like don't move anything and let it like spaz on its own. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> for people who are watching this and who are looking for tips, because you have experience with, mm. as one keeps mentioning, multiple ladies. Um, so they want to make- I'm not that, <laughs> hold on. Let's also just be, I'm not still, I don't currently 
get down like I used to. Okay, but it's not like I'm still out here. You've acquired. I I have made my rounds in my days. Yeah. So I would say that you could probably say, "Hey, here's some do's and here are some don'ts." Sure. Yes. Don't use teeth. <laughs> Number one, unless you know that person likes teeth. Teeth are out. Teeth are chop. Okay, not the move. Um, do use a lot of spit. Alright, so that's smooth. That's All smooth. over? Do you want to be spat in your mouth? No, no, no. Just when, when performing oral. Um, don't be afraid to ask for what you want. You might get it. I think if you come into every sexual experience with a new partner thinking, I am maybe good at sex, but I'm not good at sex with you just yet. I think going into it with your complete authentic self is going to make the experience better. So you might be in positions that you've never seen before or that you've never experienced, but you're just kind of in the flow of what you guys are doing. Um, and it's, sometimes it may be goofy and sometimes it may be awkward, but the times that it is great, it's gonna be far greater than it's awkward. Feed your curiosity in a safe way. Um, don't just go out and sleep with everyone unprotected, but just feed your curiosity, whether it's with porn, whether it's with a partner, whether it's with the same sex, like whatever it is, um, feed your curiosity because you don't know unless you try. Um, what may not be for one person may be for another. Because that was a fear of mine too. It's like, what if she doesn't like this? It's like, well, okay, well, maybe sh the other person would, right? Or, or future partner. Um, and then last but not least, don't suppress whatever desire you have. You could think you're the craziest freak um, or a prude, whatever, um, but don't suppress it because it will come out in a way that may not be controllable down the road, AKA you may cheat. Um, and try to feed that fantasy that you may have been able to, to experiment with your partner. This was a pleasure. It's always a pleasure when I'm around you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Hugs going on for a really long time. <laughs> Thanks Great for having job. me on. I appreciate it. <laughs> you want to do one too? I'm not there yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Will you do a trust fall with me? Sure. You're far. Go. You're not going to catch me. I will, but you got to trust me. Wow, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> you really trust me. <laughs> big ups to the gentlemen of enjoy the podcast who i adore with all my heart and if you also enjoy this kind of content go over to jared's youtube channel and see more of them i put a link in the info box another link in the info box which you will see is a link to beducated which i genuinely hope that you click because one that shows them that my audience loves this kind of content and i really do love this kind of partnership but two if you love free then this is for you. You get 24 hours of Beducated's courses, the sex education that you wish you had for absolute free because they are that confident that after being exposed to what they have to offer, you're gonna wanna come back for more. So go down to the info box, like I said, click a couple links, and then also while you're going down, visit the comments section and let me know what's one thing that you wish you learned in sex education. I got you dripping in a Tesla, you fucking up all the leather. I just checked, I got a checker, we fucking it up together. Don't lie, don't I, don't I, don't I, don't I. I can't help but flex it all, I can't wait to break it all. I'm the only one to make it. Feel it.